Black Moon Wukong has sold over 10 million copies. We talked about this already. It's made a lot of money. Okay, whether or not if it's all from China or not, I'm pretty sure it's not. Uh, it doesn't matter. Not. 10 million is 10 million. $600 million is $600 million. It doesn't matter, right? But there are a lot of people who are extremely mad. This comes from Dad Park Place. Shout out. IGN writer who smeared game science and Black Myth Wukong calls for a boycott of game previously admitted to hating white people. We talked about this before. He's a Chinese guy. I believe he lives in Singapore. Mm, yeah, yeah, sounds familiar. Yeah. All right, let's go ahead and read the article right over here. It says, uh, one of the IGN writers who smeared game science as sexist called for gamers to boycott Black Myth Wukong ahead of the game's release. Interestingly, this same writer has previously admitted to hating white people. Man. Man, oh man. As reported by YouTuber Smash JT, shout out, let's see, a writer, Ki Hoon Chan, who, like I said, Ki Hoon Chan, no affiliation. I'm not related to this person. I don't know who this person is, all right? Just putting it out there. <laughs> who co wrote <laughs> an article with Rebecca Valentine at IGN accusing game science of being sexist based on crude recruitment posters the company used back in 2015. Is uh, sorry, as well as social media posts that have been heavily disputed and criticized for using uncharitable translation, called for gamers to boycott Black Myth Wukong right before the game released. And this is this is the actual video right over here. Like I said, his eyes are way too big. My eyes are a lot smaller. We are not related at all. All right, just letting you know, his eyes are too close together. All right, he could be he could have Down syndrome. I'm not sure. Let's continue. Chan posted to X, "I'm so fucking pissed off." This has gone too far. Don't play Black Myth Wukong. If you must, go and pirate it. If you enjoy, I do not want to know it. Fuck game science and all of the grifters who are doing this to one of my favorite people in the industry. <laughs> Wait. Favorite people in the industry. Who's I think who's I think it's uh that girl. That Valentine girl, Rebecca Valentine. Oh, oh, oh the one that hit yeah, her she name. Had, she, she had to like private her account mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Oh no, man. You, yeah. you you're you are a you're an article writer. You have to you have to put your article on the name. You are you have a an internet presence. You yeah. have to have thicker skin than that. See, people are gonna call you out, right? As much yeah. as we don't like Alyssa Mercanti, she at least knows she has thick skin and she knows how to fight back. Well, not most recently because she's actually starting to sue people. So we'll see what's uh, we'll see where that goes. But how do you feel about um, this, his tweet right over here, man? How do yeah, you feel about as, that? Yeah, as you mentioned, like you're a journalist, like you have a responsibility to share your opinion. That's you're kind of like a public figure. So you, the fact you, the fact that you want all the benefits of saying your shitty opinions and not taking accountability, it's just. It's just scummy behavior, in my opinion. It's like that's the next worst thing you can do next to plagiarism, like trying to uh, on a smear campaign and at the same time trying to, you know, do dodge all criticism so that you don't get a mental breakdown because you know that's what's gonna happen the moment that you release your articles, which you still choosingly do anyway, just for the sake of I don't know some personal insecurity or something that happened in the past. That's why you end up being the way you are. But yeah, either way, it is what it is. Black Myth Wukong is doing really well and there's nothing, literally nothing you can do about it. No matter how many smear campaigns or slanders you try to throw into the game or the, or the developers, nothing. You cannot do anything about it. Yep. And the thing is, uh, like, let's say if not, I'm, I, let's say I'm not talking about story. All right, no story related. Like my top three games right now for this year, and if you're counting in um, DLCs that are also included, because some DLCs are actually it, it, its own game itself based on how big it is. Um, I would say Elden Ring DLC would be a Shadow of the Earth Tree would be my, my my game of the year in terms of gameplay this year. Second would be, to be honest with you, a tie between Black Myth Wukong and Final Fantasy Rebirth. Right, Final Fantasy Rebirth has the story sort of sucks. I understand. There's a lot of mini games. It's sort of garbage too. But the gameplay itself, the the, the combat is really really good. Same thing with Black Moon Wukong. And third place will be Stellar Blade. 
in terms of yeah. combat wise, right? We're not talking about story here. If we're talking about story, all of them is sort of generic, right? Mm -hmm. Other than uh, 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 the one that's most convoluted and most crazy is probably Final, Final Fantasy Rebirth. And then, you know, Shadow of the Earth Tree and anything that has to do with Elden Ring, you have to like read the actual like weapon lore. The actual, like, you, you have to go on read. Yeah. Read? The fuck? Yeah. It's, that's my, one of my big gripes with FF13. That's why I couldn't get into it. It's like, you had to read their encyclopedia to understand what's, what's going on. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. like, uh, yeah. It's like, I, I actually went back to playing near. Near, near replicant, the game that you got pissed off on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like it's so refreshing to to see the story again. Even though it's like, even though I already know what's gonna happen, it's like the storytelling for that game is really next level. But anyway, yeah, good on these single player games. Like, I, I don't know if these executives still still don't get it. It's like, look, 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 look at the big bangers for this year. It's mostly single player, right? It's like, I yep, stellar blade. And uh, Man, this game, and, uh, Shadow of the Earth Tree, like uh, the, the, basically my top, my top four games of the year, like that I, yeah, that I played all, and I really enjoyed so all far. All single player, all single player. Yep, the, uh, you, you gotta get it, man. Single players are not dead, uh, uh, contrary to what they're claiming. Yep. Uh, let's continue right over here. Chance comments are not out of the ordinary. Back in two, uh, January 2022, as part of the lengthy thread discussing. Uh, slow clap seafoods game the ga uh, chan denigrated white gamers and even admitted his hatred for white people in one of the posts he wrote quote white gamers have zero nuance zero understanding of the world and it'll forever be like this because the world bends over to meet their expectations and if they're upset they just scream at their targets until everything works miraculously in their favor that's so racist, man. Holy crap. <laughs> uh, oh my god, man. Yeah. This is crazy. And, how yeah, oh, it's like it, this guy just needs to get out of his echo chamber and talk to actual people in real life. Like, I think that's what's wrong with most of these people. It's like they just need to get out of their circle and talk to other people outside. Like, see how normal people behave, how normal people talk. People with you know actual work, they they don't even have time to think about these kinds of things. Like it's it's so I, I don't know. It's kind of bizarre. Like how many people got into this thing? It's like it's like here. It's like when you talk about th these kinds of things, like I have to go through insane levels of mental gymnastics just to explain to them what the issues are going on with in the Western part of the world. Like it's it this concept of wokeness and DEI, it's so foreign to them. It's like they have no idea what, how far it's gotten. Yeah. All right, let's continue. In other posts, Chan wrote, Do I hate white people? Yes. And if you're a, if you're a friend, you'll understand why this is never personal. I hate white privilege so much. Their ability to scream reverse racism when faced with a tiny bit of criticism. The world revolves around them, even in Singapore. Every day there's no such thing as reverse racism because racism is just racism yeah uh, anti-racism is just racism it doesn't matter and the thing is this guy he's white adjacent so you know like uh what about asian privilege you know like imagine a cop pulls me over do you know how fast you were going? Oh, I can't see, so I don't know. <laughs> so, it's like, oh, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry for that. All right, all right, you're free to go. You're free to go. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> In an article published by first person scholar titled Decolonizing Queer Games and Play in April 2022, Chan wrote, filtering games through language of queer design may be a powerful and crucial step towards embracing diversity, but what is usually lacking in this discussion is intersectionality. Oh my fucking God, dude. Uh, yeah. Oh you know, God. You know, I think this guy wanted to get into politics, but he never got into any of them. So like he, and like a lot of people have said already, they ended up in gaming. So they just want to insert politics into it because they never got into the, political hemisphere or political newsletters man 
This uh, th this guy is unhinged, man. I didn't even know he wrote all these crazy stuff. Despite the growing uh, prevalence of queer narratives in games, the bulk of these stories are still based around casts of queer white characters. Later in the article, he stated, in other words, queer games should be further decolonized from a predominantly white Eurocentric paradigm and decoupled from the co uh, colonality colonality enforced by western european thoughts across the world man this guy this guy hates himself i bet you this guy wished he was like not asian like to be honest with you like he wished he was probably like a darker skin color or something like that if he was white he probably wished that he got aborted like i i guarantee you man oh my god the, the, the fact that you have a privilege to have a platform that people actually go and read it may it be is like three people People are three people are still reading your articles, right? Despite chance fall for boycott, Black Myth Wukong broke the record for the single most concurrent Steam players for a single game, single player game. Sorry. In fact, the game currently sits at a second most played game on Steam based on concurrent player counts behind PUBG Battlegrounds. It hit a concurrent player of 2.4 million on August Crazy. 22nd. That, yeah, this game is massive, man. It's so, so big. Game Science also reported. Back with Wukong's official account, XS sold 10 million copies across all platforms on August 23rd. And uh, yeah, it's um, and it doesn't yeah. have micro like I, I'm gonna keep saying it, it doesn't yeah. have microtransactions. It's not a yeah. gotcha game, it's not a pay to win. The thing is that the, the, the what's it called again? The items that you get for the deluxe edition within like an hour into the game, you replace them. Oh, okay, that's good to know. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> However, I get the you, regular can, you can actually upgrade them in the game later on. But like the thing is that is it worth upgrading versus the newer stuff that you're gonna be getting? The, yeah, that's actually yeah. good. Good, yeah. Right. But yeah, man. Uh yeah. the thing is um I, I guarantee I guarantee it that if um they um you know Black Mafu Kong had these characters in it, like he would it's like oh my god, like literally clapping like a fucking seal. This game is so good. And the thing is that you imagine having these characters in the game called Black Mifu Kong, where the main character is the monkey. You can't have that, man. You that kind of diversity you cannot have is because well, maybe yeah. it follows the title literally black, black. <laughs> so that's why that's probably the justification they will use. Yeah. But yeah, good on game side. I'm kind of excited for them because like that, like. I, I imagine they they were working on a shoestring budget for Black Myth. Like they were trying, they were narrowly, um, could, they were almost depleting their budget probably to to make this game possible. Now that they have the much bigger backing thanks to the success of this game, I'm excited what they come up with next. Thanks for checking out this segment of the Project Egg Row podcast. If you like what we do here, please like, share, subscribe. Hit the notification bell and you will know next time when we go live. We do go live every Saturday at 8 p.m. Once again, we are just getting started. Tons of more video to come. Thanks, and we'll see you guys next time.